our guest today, Nelson Nash. He is my mentor and teacher and really is so responsible for me having the business I do today because what I am so blessed to do is to share with people this life-changing financial strategy. And if it wasn't for you, Nelson, I, I don't know what I would be doing. Because thankfully, I learned 16 years ago how money really works and didn't have a solution for people until I met you. It takes two to tango, so thank you very much for being there. Well, you are the author of Becoming Your Own Banker, best-selling book. You've sold over 200,000 copies and yep. counting. 250. 250,000 yep. and counting. And I'm responsible for... Some of that, right? I buy books from you all the time. A good portion. A good portion. That's Mm -hmm. right. I share it with my clients. And you have now written your second book, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth. So let's start with some of the content of the first book for those of you out there who are not familiar with Nelson Nash's concept. It's called The Infinite Banking Concept. does go by different names, although... Some names out there have nothing to do with infinite banking, although they do want to attach their wheel to the star. But Nelson, in as few words as you can, describe the financial strategy. People don't understand that banking is a vital function for everyone. It's the lifeblood of our existence financially. Someone is going to control the banking equation. Teresa, when you go to buy something, money's got to flow from you to that other party in a relatively short period of time, or those narrow-minded folks just won't do business with you. No sense of humor at all. Now, there's got to be a pool big enough from which to complete that transaction and, or nothing happens. Well, we see that in everyday examples of buying clothes, groceries, and gasoline stuff like that. Yeah, but there are major purchases out there like automobiles, home, business people. There's huge expenditure going on there. I'm an aviator, remember? Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been a a pilot for 66 years. I keep up with a good bit of stuff goes on in the airplane world. The Boeing Dreamliner is now flying. It's only three years behind schedule. But Teresa, one of those things cost $200 million. Now, all Nippon Airlines bought 52. That is a huge chunk of money. Cash transaction. Yeah, that a pool has got to be there big enough to complete that transaction. But people, the, the everyday person, doesn't realize that uh, you can control that banking function totally at your level if you only understand the principles of what we're teaching in my books. Mm-hmm. You know what's interesting, Nelson? I had a an acquaintance share with me the concept of opportunity cost you know really simple way i'd like to explain it for my clients is you know when you buy a car for cash twenty thousand dollars let's say that twenty thousand dollars will never ever work for you again absolutely when you take the money from your specially designed specific type of whole life policy right you take that twenty thousand dollars that money continues to work for you. And the moment you take a dollar out of working for you, you can never get that dollar back. And that's what these people who pay cash totally miss. Mm -hmm. They've got to get educated. Mm -hmm. uh, They've got to realize that something in their thought process is wrong. And uh, that's difficult to get over for a lot of people. Well, they are over time. It's it's all education because this is a totally different way of of looking at money. And and people do, I think, understand. You know, a dollar saved today is certainly worth more than a dollar that they save ten years from now. Sure. You know, I hear every single day. Oh, I wish I had started this when I was younger. You know, we all wish we had put a dollar aside. You know, twenty, thirty. 40 years ago, right? Well, you remember I'm uh, educated as a forester, right? Yes, of course. Well, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Right. Next best time is today. Right. And the banking function, the ability to be your own source of financing, that's only one benefit, right, of working with the infinite banking concept. Um, There are many, many others. I have many clients who are in their 50s and 60s. 
you know, the stage of life that they're in, Nelson, they're not in the accumulation stage anymore. They're in the, you know, I want to hold my money, I want to preserve my money, make sure I don't lose my money. What would you say to those individuals out there? Are they already at that stage or what? Uh, uh, well, oh. you know, in 50s, early 60s, they are still, you know, trying to put money aside for retirement and getting ready to retire. Right. But their right. goal, you know, when you tell them, well, you know, you you can use your policies to buy cars and mm-hmm. improve your homes, whatever. They're not thinking that. They're thinking, I, I need to preserve my money. I'm not going to be spending a whole lot more money in my lifetime. I don't think that's correct necessarily because they're still going to buy cars, but that's not where their mindset is, right? Their mindset is, I need a place to to park my money that's safe so I can grow it. Well, Um, you use the uh, right word there when you say park your money because that's the the title of my new book, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth, that wealth has got to be stored somewhere. That's just all there is to it. And the best place to store it is with uh, dividend paying life insurance. Now, a lot of these people that you just uh, referred to there are buying annuities. If people understood life insurance. They'd never buy an annuity. An annuity is the reverse of life insurance. They're uh, taking a principal sum and dissipating it over a period of time. Now, there's other forms of annuities out there that they use the word annuity. Uh, they call it a deferred annuity. That's all only an accumulation account of some sort that will turn into an annuity. But, uh, gosh, uh, as I demonstrate uh, with that policy I just described to you, uh, I can have that income as long as I live on a tax-free basis, and uh, the death benefit won't go down. So let's talk about the other options that Americans have um, for parking their money. They've got the banks, savings accounts, CDs. Um, speak to the banks. Why isn't it safe to park your money at a bank? Well, I would never want to do it because of the fact that uh, when you put money in a bank, uh, they multiply that by 10 and uh, inflate the money supply and so forth and cause the problem. Uh, and there's supposedly the guarantees out there by the FDIC and things like that. But that's all a fantasy also. Uh, people need to study economics a little bit more than they do. What about uh, retirement plans, qualified retirement plans? What about that being a good place to save well, money? They're all functions of my uh, of the IRS code, and I have this uh, developed uh, big time in my new book, uh, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth. The subtitle of the book is uh, revealing. It says... Uh, a grassroots method of avoiding fractional reserve banking, dash, dash, think about it, that uh, when you do this, uh, you're not part of the problem. And, and the other really, really good analogy, a really great analogy that describes the issue with putting money aside, putting money away in a tax-deferred plan is the, the concept of, you know, do you want to pay taxes on the seed or the harvest. And you have such yep. a beautiful illustration mm-hmm. with corn. Yes. Uh, Mary likes to uh, decorate for the season. Your, your lovely, beautiful wife, bride, yeah. Mary. Yeah, she cleans up good, doesn't she? She cleans up beautifully. Yeah, anyway, uh, she likes to decorate for the seasons. In November of a year ago, uh, I'm at the uh, breakfast table and I'm uh, drinking coffee and I notice little p- pilgrims and little pumpkins and a couple of years of corn with the shucks peeled back on the center of the table. Well, I don't know what made me do it, but I picked up one of those ears and I uh, went down one of the rows counting all the kernels of corn. And then I went around the ear of corn doing the same thing and I did some third grade arithmetic multiplying the rows by uh, the amount on each row, and it was over 500 kernels of corn. Well, let's suppose that I um, put one of those kernels of corn in the ground, favorable condition, and up comes a stalk. Got to have other stalks around there for this to happen. Uh, but out of that one stalk came three ears of corn. Well, one seed, one kernel of corn, produced 1,500-plus kernels. Well, that's the law of the harvest. 
Now, I am the IRS, uh, Teresa, and you are the corn grower. On which would you rather be taxed, seed or harvest? Everybody says seed. Yeah, but uh, every tax-qualified plan is predicated on exactly the opposite. And why people get suckered into that sort of stuff, I'll never know, except they've never thought it through. That and the immediate gratification of not having to pay taxes. It, it's its tough. You know, I, I have the same dilemma. My my CPA, who has um, sat through your seminar, right, mm-hmm. your workshop, he is very aware of my thinking. And every yep. year, it, you know, it pains him. I know I, I we have these discussions. <laughs> and he's like, you know, you're paying so much in taxes. And it mm-hmm. pains me to write the darn check. Nelson, I... I'm all about educating my clients. I share, and you know, you mentioned that I buy probably more books than any other advisor in the country from you. I'm all about getting those books in my clients' hands because the more educated they are, the more they understand that the conventional financial wisdom that is taught to Americans is wrong. Yes, always has been. And always will be. We're living proof of that statement. How many Americans are living in financial peace? Yeah. Very, very, very few. Very, very few. Mm -hmm. Very few. And thankfully, and I I go back to, you know, thanking you for this, um, for giving me, um, teaching me this strategy so I can teach others because thankfully, I only have happy clients. I only have clients that know their, their policies and their strategies are growing every single year. They have access to money when they need it. They have flexibility in, uh, with their money. Um, it's such a beautiful thing. And without your counsel, without you going through the pain and the bruises that you suffered many, many years ago when you would explain these concepts to people and they would look at you thinking, this man is nuts. <laughs> if you hadn't gone through that pain, I wouldn't have the practice that I have today. My clients wouldn't be experiencing the financial peace that they do. Well, I thank you for your thought process there, but as we started out, I told you that it takes two to tango. Without, without you or someone like you, I am nothing. I know, I know. No. But, you know, heartfelt gratitude to you always. Because I had the easy part, Nelson. You had the tough part. Yes, but this is fun now. So uh, th- there's nothing more rewarding than to be 81 years old and uh, this be the best time of life. And it is the best time of life for you. No I, question. I, you... You travel more than anybody I know. You're an evangelist for this concept. You have so many friends um, that just love you and just admire the heck out of you. And you're so wise and so smart. Well, there's nothing more rewarding than to see people work themselves out of darkness. Many blessings. Hugs. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, we will speak soon. Bye.